<clears throat> all right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Malak, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi, it's the WF Detroit Cat, coming at you with another cold cut. It's going to be a quick cold cut. Nonetheless, as the scriptures say, we have to be watchful, be up to date with these prophecies and knowing what's taking place on the earth in these last days. So it reads, Americans will feel significant impact on possible port strike. American Trucking Association CEO. Right, so you got these port workers that's going on strike. And this is 33 days before the election. And when you understand the so-called white man, his witchcraft, and the sorcery that he deals with, 33 is a very significant number. 30, 33 is a very significant number on the left-handed side. You understand? Because when you add 3 plus 3, you get that Number six, which 666 is the number of the beast, right? So we're going to play this video and we're going to grab some precepts. And this is also why you Israelites in these last days must be on fire for the Lord, not being lukewarm, not straddling the fence. Having one foot in this truth and one foot in the world. Now is the time to go all out for your how about me? I was shot. Now is the time to lift yourself up and put off your sins and let not your sins weigh you down, but rather keep pushing toward the mark. So let's play the video. Welcome back. We are days away from a potential strike by 45,000 dock workers at more than two dozen ports along the east and gulf coasts. Negotiations remain at a standstill with half of the nation's cargo in limbo. Trucking companies are scrambling to move products off ships before things potentially grind to a halt on Tuesday. So it's a half of the nation's cargo in limbo. Right. So you got your food sources, your clothing, medicine possibly you got all these different cargoes and imports rather that's on the standstill it's not making it to where it's supposed to make it and now major shipping companies say they will be slapping a port disruption surcharge on all cargo coming to out to or from these terminals if a strike does go through joining me now is american trucking association's president and ceo chris beer <clears throat> Chris, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here. What's your reaction to this, and where do you think this is going? Well, Maria, thanks for having me. I think the impact, uh, if this strike occurs next Tuesday, is going to be significant, uh, not just on the economy, but you know, Americans, everybody that's uh, in need of goods each day are going to feel the impact that this is going to have. We're talking 36 ports in the east and Gulf Coast. Uh, that are represented here. Five of the top 10 in the country are going to shut down on Tuesday. You know, we're moving 12,000 trucks daily at Port of New York, New Jersey. This is very significant, especially on farmers. We're talking nearly half of the goods exported out of uh, our ports come from these East Coast ports. We're talking produce, poultry, cotton, uh, this is very significant on our farmers. That produce is going to be felt first in week one if this were to occur. Uh, people are going to have limited choice and they're going to pay a lot more for it. So I appreciate your paying attention to this because it's coming. Well, this is a great point that you're making. So produce gets hit first. Um, and I was thinking that the real impact would be inflationary because uh, obviously the supply demand dynamics leads to higher prices for things. We're just trying to get inflation down and perhaps we see another spike as a result of this. Absolutely. And, and trucks are the glue in all of this. Whether you move it uh, on truck or rail, trucks are still going to move that last mile. And we're talking you know, large companies, but also the medium and small companies, independent contractors, owner operators, they're going to get hung out to dry if these ports shut. So beyond the 85,000 ILA workers, we're talking thousands 
of other workers that support the supply chain, it's going to take a long time after a week to two weeks of shutdown for the economy to recover. So inflation is definitely an outcome from this. Yeah. So if the truckers take on more load, doesn't that mean we see an impact to gasoline prices? I mean, oil prices have come off of the highs uh, in the last couple of months. Does that reverse? Absolutely. I, I think you're going to see repercussions that are going to last. So every week is about a month, two, three weeks, push out into a quarter to two quarters. You could see this spilling well into 2025, uh, having real repercussions. If this, the longer it plays out, the more impact you're going to have. So 36 ports, East Coast, Gulf Coast, this is very significant to the American economy. You can't reroute all this through the West Coast. So shutting down for terms and conditions that are completely out of reach, 70% pay increase, that's what the ILA is asking for. I think you and I would love a 70% yeah. pay increase, but that's not reality. So they need to come to the table, they need to get reasonable, and they need to get a deal. Well, the last time the Biden-Harris administration got involved in the strike negotiations, uh, the workers got what they wanted. So I wonder where this goes. I mean, I, you know, obviously the timing was, was you know, uh, on purpose, intentional timing right before the election. I, I'm, I'm wondering if, in fact, you do see uh, Biden or Harris intervene here and perhaps give the workers what they want. How does this play out? Well, if... If they're consistent, they're not going to come to the table. They haven't yet, and we're, what, five days out. So this yeah. is this is really significant in terms of uh, leadership. Uh, we've got a president, vice president, and an acting secretary of labor that have walked a picket line for the UAW. Mm. They are already in the pocket of big union bosses, and they've stated that. So if you're USMX representing the 36 ports, you have no incentive to come to the table if it's led by this administration, because they've already shown their cards. They're already in the pocket of labor. So yeah. there's no way that you can mediate with credibility. That's not leadership. We need it. We need it now. That's a great point. Chris, real quick before you go, what is your assessment of the economic situation today? And how does that worsen should a strike happen? Well, I think week over week is how you measure this. I was involved in the Taft-Hartley in 2002 when the West Coast port shut down for nearly two weeks. And we measured in advance the impact that that shutdown was going to have week over week. So when I say a week equals a month, two weeks, three weeks equal a quarter, you could see this spill well into 2025. The ramifications, not just to the supply chain, including trucking, but the entire economy, choice will be limited and prices are going to be higher. So that's not good news going into an election, going into the holidays. This administration needs to get to the table and broker a deal right now. Wow. All right, Chris. <clears throat> so there you have it, man. You got a lot of things taking place, a lot of prophecies coming to pass. And um, this goes to show you that we're living in the end times. Inflation, high prices, things of that nature. Let's get Second Kings, the second chapter. It's like the sixth chapter. <clears throat> this is Second Kings, chapter six, of verse twenty-four. And it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. So famines are coming to America as well. A famine is a lack of food and water. So like the scriptures say, that which have been is now. The things that have taken place in the days of old are coming back on the earth. So let's read it again in verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass head, an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver. So 80 pieces of silver. And the fourth part of cab of doves dung for five pieces of silver. Now just imagine that they were selling feces for five pieces of silver. So the lowest of the low, a dove, a slaki, a donkey's head, and a dove's dung was sold for high prices. So how much more your ribeye steaks, your uh, your poultry, your chicken? your fish, all these prices are going to skyrocket. You're going to see a tomahawk steak being sold for 
you're going to see the, the chicken that was once um, 10 bucks for your uh, chicken thighs. That's going to be sold for 50 bucks. You understand? So the prices are going to continue to go up and go up. And this is what you call inflation. In verse 26, and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, they cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the mine floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What a lie of thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. You see that? So they was having conversations and they was putting actions behind actually eating their children due to the severeness of the famine. So that's coming back to America, famines. People eating their children, people eating one another, cannibalism. Let's get that in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 26. <clears throat> this is Isaiah chapter 49, verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am the Lord. And thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. So the Lord is going to feed them that oppress the Israelites with their own flesh. Why are these things coming upon America? Due to the judgments and the sins of Babylon. Right? Now when you read Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, it speaks about the grinders being low. The laborers ceasing from their work. Let's get second address. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's get. I want to say that's the 17th chapter. Let's see. Now, this is going into the destruction of Babylon, the final judgment. But <clears throat> it ties into what's taking place now. But ultimately, this is a prophecy going into the destruction after uh, the nuclear missiles hit. This is Revelation chapter 18, and verse 11. It say, and the merchandise of the earth, it's like, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyan wood and all manner of vessels of ivory <clears throat> and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men <clears throat> and the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all see that so all the things that's precious to you your fruits your vegetables your meats your clothing all those things are going to be departed from you Verse 15, the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and welling. Because again, this is going into the destruction. <clears throat> Once those nuclear missiles hit, no more imports. It's over with. Verse 16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught, 
and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. See that? So they're going to stand afar off, wondering what was going on, looking at the smoke of the city rise up to the heavens when they see the destruction of America. Now, tying this into what's going on, the shipmasters are confounded. No man uh, take up the imports. They're going on strike. They want a 70% pay raise. And they standing on that. But a lot of this seems what? Orchestrated. Because this is what? 33 days before the election. <clears throat> so let's get um Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. <clears throat> it says, Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man heart discern of both time and judgment. Right? So if you keeping these commandments, you're not going to feel the evil things that's coming. You're not going to die through, due to a famine. You're not going to suffer the fate that America is going to suffer because you're keeping the commandments of the Lord. Verse 6, because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Right? So the misery is going to be great upon the people of America. Again, Americans will feel significant impact on possible port strike. So you're going to feel that impact. And this is why we exhort our people to come back to the Lord, keep these commandments so you can be divinely protected. As it states in Psalms, the 91st chapter. Right? So with that, I want to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, 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 Ba'ashem,